And now, most of you all know Jim, so I don't really need much of an introduction. We're going to be talking about humanism today, so it's a topic that we should all have a great interest in. And uh, Jim has become one of our favorite speakers, so I'll pass the mic over to him. Thanks, Jim. So, um, before I start off, my uh, Bill helped me pick the topic, uh, the title, How, What is Humanism? You were going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, and I want to take a moment of personal privilege. I've been talking up the idea of lobbying um, Dr. Oz and John Fetterman and maybe the other two candidates. And I put that in the back burner for a while. My wife's twin sister died. She was in a deteriorating health situation for 18 months. And she would have died in a few weeks, but June, June 8th. She had a, 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 an accident home to cut off her oxygen supply and, and we lived alone and ended up passing. So I'm all up in you know, all kinds of issues. And my wife is quite distraught over the whole thing. But we'll pick that up in the next week or so. I'm going to get back into the game on that. Um, and, and I think it's the right thing to do. I know uh, Paul and I and a bunch of other people did some lobbying in the Susan Wild time in 2017. It really worked out really well. So that is it. So, um, you know, the truth is there are people in this room that know more about humanism than I do. And so I'm going to talk some, but if you have ideas you want to share, or if you think I have it wrong, or if you think you want to add something, feel free, because let's make this a bit of a discussion, because everybody, humanism is such a broad, and I'm talking about atheism and, you know, free thinking, that whole gambit. There may be people in the room that have other things that contribute, and, and I'd really appreciate that, and I'd learn something. Uh, from that, uh, so feel free. And I guess I better get up and here where you, I can actually work. You do work want to uh, please raise your hand so we can grab a mic. So okay, we'll, so we'll I open the recording. You want to leave a mic here, and I'll move it around because I don't want you because we're not going to have too many questions as we go. I'll, I'll just move it around. There. Thanks for reminding me. I can help you out with the mic. Then. Yeah. Um, so here's my outline. I thought I'd talk about a primer, you know, a guide on categories of non-belief. And let you think about where you fit. And you know, I'm sure a lot of you thought about this in the past. Then I'm going to throw out a vision for our humanist community here in the Lehigh Valley. And I'm taking a risk here. I'm saying what I think we ought to think about doing. And it's not my decision. It's all our decisions. But I'm encouraging you to continue to develop this community, because I think this community has a lot to offer our region. I was going to review the free thinking nonprofit landscape in America, just how it's, been, how it's run overall. Some of this you're familiar with, but I think some of it will put it in a perspective you'll understand better. And then I was at the Freedom from Religion Foundation's National Convention last December, uh, November, and I thought I'd give you a quick look at that and save you three days of travel, a lot of money and, and effort uh, involved in it. So th that's what I'm thinking about. So in terms of categories of non-belief, uh, and again, I want you to think about where you fit in this list, and we all fit in more than one place, typically. Uh, Webster has a definition of, of agnostic, which doesn't work for me very well. But Webster says, an agnostic is a person who holds that the existence of the ultimate cause, such as God, and the essential nature of things are unknown and unknowable, or that human knowledge is limited to experience. That doesn't do much for me, but that, that's at least what Webster says. I think, uh, for me, the people that I know that call themselves agnostic, I think fall into a particular niche. And the people that I know that call themselves agnostic are steeped in religion from their childhood. <laughs> they're indoctrinated in religion, and they're realizing that religion ain't working for them, that it just, there's falsehoods built into it, and there's assumptions that just aren't true. But they don't want to leave this indoctrination, and they don't want to leave their social life. I mean, their social life is around the church. And so they say to themselves, well, I'm, I'm an agnostic. In other words, I'm not sure. Um, um, and they, they really hedge their bets. But I have, I have one friend that calls himself an agnostic. And after I had this conversation with him, he could call himself an agnostic. So here's what we say. I say that agnostics tacitly admit that they don't actually believe in God. Because for religious people, Belief in God is a binary decision. You believe or you don't believe. I mean, can you be 40% believer in God or 70% believer in God? If you're a agnostic, you don't believe in God, is my opinion on it. And I say there's no middle ground. It's just an idea. Maybe other people don't agree. But my friend doesn't call himself an agnostic. He's still involved with the church, and he's still indoctrinated in his brain. But he realizes there's a lot of problems with it. So again, I say the agnostics are not really theists, and theists are people who believe in God, they don't believe in theology. So um, 
Any thoughts on that? I mean, uh, I, I, so, so I think it's an interesting issue when people call themselves agnostic. As I say, I think they're hedging their bets trying to maintain their connection to what they were trained, but realizing that it's futile. And, and I think being politely telling this, I think it's helpful to move our movement forward. I like the simplest possible definition of agnostic, which is that Gnosticism is knowledge. Yeah. And if you don't, it, and theism is belief. Yeah, right. So you can either believe in God or not believe in God. But agnosticism is somebody who doesn't know. They, Ag agnostic, huh? Agnostic, just as that's far as know. not not knowing for sure. Yeah, but that's, that's good. That's, Thank you. That's the definition I go by. I like what you said, though. All right, good. The next word I'm putting up here just for fun. There is a category called ignostic. I'm not sure I can explain it to you well enough. But an ignostic is a person who question who who says the idea that the question of the existence of God is meaningless because the word God has no coherent and unambiguous definition. And the way I like to think of it is an agnostic says, I'm not sure about God. And an agnostic says, I don't know what you're asking me. It is impossible to know what God actually means. I, I'm not offering that as great academic, but I thought it was sort of an interesting uh, sidelight. I do want to spend a little time on atheism. I think we all know that atheism is a lack of belief in God or gods. Um, and many of the faithful imagine that just as a theist is firmly believes in God, an atheist fights belief in God. That's not true. Atheists are not anti-religion and are not working against theism. Even though the term atheist would imply anti-theist, we're not fighting theism, as I see it at least. We're working on living a better way of life than theism. That, that is our agenda, as I see it. Um, so I've read a, one or two books about the subject, and one book by a Peter Bogosian, I think it's a manual for creating atheists, so it might be for another book. He says atheism uses the term, as Peter Bogosian uses the term, means there's insufficient evidence to warrant belief in a divine supernatural creator of the universe. They're not anti, we're not anti-theists. There's insufficient evidence to be warrant belief in a divine supernatural creator of the universe. However, he says, if shown sufficient evidence to warrant belief in such an entity, then atheists would believe in God. See that? I mean, that's sort of an interesting idea. An atheist could actually become a God believer if there was sufficient evidence uh, to support that. Uh, and he says, Rosen says, we're rational. We look at the information and make reasonable decisions. So an atheist does not claim, no matter how solid the evidence for a supernatural creator, I refuse to believe. So I think that's an interesting piece of this. The next thing I thought I'd go into is that atheism is a very one-dimensional description of a person. I mean, atheism is not an alternate lifestyle to theism. You don't have churches of atheism or social groups of atheism. We have no dogma. We have no preachers. There's nobody preaching atheism. There's no theology, but merely a lack of belief in God or gods. And atheism is not a social or political movement or a philosophy or a worldview. So it's really a very anemic way to describe a person. Atheism is short for anti-theism. We never hear of anti-astrologists, do we? Or anti-alchemists? Alchemy would be the idea of taking lead and turning it into gold, like the Middle Ages they tried to do. Now we know, it can, I guess it can be done. Just it costs way more than the gold you produce. <laughs> but in other words, you don't see anti-astrology, and yet nobody believes in astrology. And you don't see anti-alchemy. Nobody believes in alchemy. And then for that reason, we don't really need anti-theism or atheism, as, as I see it, for what it's worth. Um, so, and I also uh, say that to argue for atheism further perpetuates theism by making theism seem like a rational alternative. A religious person says, well, I'm not an atheist. I believe in theism. Well, the atheism ain't not, is nothing, basically. Describing someone as an atheist will tell you next to nothing about her. And from the believer's point of view, atheism is always heard of as, as a rejection of religious values. Hence, we see rampant mistrust of atheists in our society. I think less so today. And, and on one of our agendas, I think, is to promote a reasonable, rational view of atheism. In a too short summary, a theist says, God means my values. A religious person says, God is my values. 
And when they run across an atheist, they hear that as, I reject your values. The atheist is rejecting God's values. And that drives this agenda to, um, uh, drives mistrust in atheists. So I think the term atheist is not helpful in moving society to a post-theism future. I don't have a solution for this problem, but I just put out that it seems to me that theism, the word the atheism is just not, uh, not, not useful for us. And these are the reasons why atheism, I think, needs to go out of, out of use. Does anybody see it differently? Maybe it's, uh, is it like, uh, but, Go ahead. No, yeah. uh, uh, what you said, I think, is very insightful. I have never really thought about this. Yeah. Yes. By the way, I have this script in writing. If you want to see it and review it sometime, yeah. I got it in writing. I'm going to give you a handout with very brief uh, web links and stuff, too, at the end. And, and to some extent, this is how many angels fit in the head of a pen. <laughs> you know, we're not going to change the use of atheism, but the word atheism really is a problem to fill. Well, I, and I think some people have tried to replace it. Wasn't there the bright movement, right, to, yeah. to try and, you know, create a, another term that would be, you know, more palatable pe to people? Um, you know, so I, some of it is what people call us, right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe part of it is, is us just embracing what people call us, right? You know, with the, you know, the uh, homosexual community, right, they just took gay, right? They just embraced it, right? Yeah. And made it something good versus trying to fight people yeah. for a different term. I don't know. I think that's one possible way to think yeah. about it. Good, good. Any other thoughts? Go ahead. Uh, your, your thought um, well, prior about um, the rejection of, of values. Yeah. How, uh, to me, that's, that makes a lot of sense. You know, that they, the theist is going to I mean, it, it's like a trigger, like a, a bull right. waving a thing. Right. And, you know, I, before in a prior discussion to the start of this, I was talking uh, and I mentioned about, um, you know, I know many atheists that are very ethical, very, you know, yeah. you know more so than some of the believers. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's going to do any good to get rid of the term uh, atheist. Uh, some people leave more shirts that have atheists on them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're going to change the word, is it really going to have any effect at all? We know that anti-abortionists are now called pro-life, because pro sounds a lot much better than anti. And uh, we all know that pro-life is anti-abortion. And if you give another name for atheism, people will really know what it is. Yeah. So we're not going to accomplish anything by doing that. Uh, I, I'm looking at atheism as a superset of the other terms you mentioned, the yeah. agnostic. It has, it's not, there's no overlap between them. It's in the atheism group. Yeah. So, uh, I've always said this, it's probably a stupid statement, I've always said uh, humanists are people who are too timid to admit that they're atheists. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your good comments. I, I, I guess my thought on it is we're not going to change the world, we're not going to change the English language, but and we don't promote the term atheism here, really, and we ought to continue that probably because it is a it is a way for people to hate us illogically and to give them a reasonable alternative. Well, I'm not an atheist. I am a theist. Anyway. I, I suggest we let people talk, call themselves whatever they want to be called. Yeah. Good point. We have a, I just, I just heard, and I don't remember the numbers exactly, but the, the, that Pew question that they put out there every year about religion, there's something like, you know, 32% of people when asked the question, do you believe in God, answer no. Yeah. And then when asked if they're an atheist, it's only like 15% of the people that say that, yeah. that kind of thing. But it's like, well, then they don't really know what the word means, but personally, I don't care what they call themselves. Yeah. All right. You know, Pick the chart. My plan is to continue on. I still have some more definitions to talk about. Uh, I just want, oh, I'm sorry. One ahead, very short comment. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that that's one good thing about the name humanist is 
a lot of times if, if you say you're an atheist or you don't believe in God, people say, well, you got to believe in something. You know, <laughs> you know right. what do you believe in? Well, you could say, well, I believe in humans, and humans are good, and they are rational and can solve problems. Right. I'll tell you one thing, Jim, if I can interrupt you and yeah, just tell right. you a little story. I, don't laugh at me. <laughs> what, what John just said... Um, I'll tell you the story. A lot of people have heard this already, but before I joined this group, I had been looking for uh, an atheist group. And I did Google searches and different things, and there wasn't really a, a group of people that get together. And I went down to um, one of Free Thought Society's frigatrous gynecophobia parties where P.Z. Myers was speaking, if anybody knows who that is. He, I wanted to go see him. I went there, and I met Joe Fox and a few other members of LVH. Started talking to them. They said, well, why don't you join Lehigh Valley Humanists? I'm like, oh, I don't want to be humanists. You know, what? They're, they're a bunch of weak-kneed dummies, whatever, you know, like this. And it's like, no, 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 no. And then now I prefer humanism as a label. Yeah. It's, okay. just, it's just, I mean, atheism is going by the book. It's just not believing. It tells you, like you said, it tells you nothing about that person. Humanism tells a lot more about the person. Yeah, I agree with that, that, too. So, a uh, free thinker, uh, this is a person that forms opinions about religion on the basis of reason, independent of tradition, authority, or established belief. And I think you're all probably pretty well indoctrinated into that. And free thinkers include atheists, agnostics, and rationalists. And rationalists is a smaller category. It's just the principle or habit of accepting reason as a supreme authority. Uh, that would be a rationalist. And again, we, I think we all know that you can't be a free thinker who demands conformity to a Bible, a creed, or a Messiah. That would be ridiculous. And to a free thinker, revelation and faith are invalid, and orthodoxy is no guarantee of the truth. And that's from Dan Barker from Freedom of Religion Foundation, though I think there's actually a little more information that we can get into that in a little bit later. And then I thought, uh, you know, we talked briefly about humanism. Um, I think you probably all know, I'm not going to spend much time, in fact, I might skip through a couple things here. But humanism is a progressive philosophy of life that, without theism or other supernatural beliefs, affirms our ability and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire uh, to the greater good. Um, I do have a couple slides, but I think I'm going to skip it a lot more time for conversation. I have as some core principles most humanists support, and I'm not going to spend the time on that. I've got a handout I'll leave out here for, for a dozen of you, and I can email others that want it. And it's got the links to these websites. You, you probably all know that the, uh, I'll just leave this laying around here. The humanist website, AmericanHumanist.org, has a lot of information. And this is one is here, the philosophy perspective and uh, definition of humanism. And the last thing I think if you haven't done, you might want to do, and that is to compare the Christian Ten Commandments to the humanist Ten Commitments. And just uh, real briefly, the first two or three Ten Commandments talk about reverencing God and no God before me and all this hogwash. And you say, what the hell does that have with my life? And then you hear about you can't kill people, you can't steal. And then you go to the Ten Commitments of humanism, and they're really powerful. They're really ways to live your life. Uh, so I'd encourage you to look at that at your own time. So I've, I've talked about what, agnostic, atheism, I guess rationalism a little bit, free thinker and humanism. Is there another category that people see are out there that's, that sort of covers the, the scope, I think. There may be some small ones out there. Um, skeptics, maybe, Jim? Skeptics? Skeptic, well, let me write that down. I'm taking notes here, too, because I learned what we're talking about, right? Skeptic. There are other terms, too, I'm sure I could think of, we could think of, we thought about it for a while. So how many, I'm going to do a, a show of hands. You don't have to show your hands if you don't want. You can vote as many times as you want. How many would call themselves an agnostic here? You got two or three. How many would call themselves an uh, atheist here? Of course, humanist. I think we're all probably going to be humanist pretty much. Maybe not. And what do I got? I've got uh, free thinker. How many free thinkers? They, these terms will actually overlap quite a bit. I don't know if I've missed any, but... So we're in reasonable, you know, reasonable alignment there. I thought I'd talk, a few, uh, you know, we talked about categories of missing how you describe yourself. I thought I'd go into a second segment, and that's to talk about a vision for our humanist community. Um, and um, you know, this, I, I think I'm pretty presumptuous to throw this out. 
but it's just an idea and it's for us to die, buy into and develop if we want or do other things. I say that our society needs more structures to resist authoritarianism, resist anti-science thinking, and promote rational discussion of the issues facing us. And I say advancing humanism is a great way to bring these benefits to our society. And in a society when you can't go out and fight with, you know, anti-gay people or fight with pro-gay people and fight with anti-abortionists and pro-abortionists and all that, you just can't fight with them. To create a movement uh, that answers a lot of these questions is a pro progressive and potential, a positive way of doing these uh, issues for us. Um, and I'm talking about the um, information that Butch just mentioned here. At the Pew Research Center in 2021, their National Public Opinion Reference Survey put out a report, and it's titled, about three in 10 U.S. adults are now religiously unaffiliated. Self-identified Christians make up 63% of the U.S. population last year, down from 75% 10 years ago, a decade ago. That's a 12-point drop in 10 years. If you look into the information further, of course, younger people are much less interested in religion and Christianity than older people. So as, as more of the population is populated by these younger people as they work through the ages, uh, through the generations, you're going to see these numbers continue to favor us. Uh, I don't think, and, and the Public Religion Research Institute research report called American Values Atlas shows similar information, not quite 30%, but in that order. Um, I like what you alluded to. Most of these people aren't humanists. They just don't care. The, the, the three out of 10, two thirds of them just don't care about religion. They, they have their lives, they're busy, and they don't care about religion. So it's not they're all going to rush to get into our, into our uh, meetings here. Um, and I think that free thinkers and humanists and all in our region need an alternative to church. I mean, there are a multitude of humanists, atheists, agnostics in churches today because they fear losing their social lives by leaving church. Their social lives are structured around church, and they're, they're going to call themselves agnostic and ignore the rituals, uh, but they're still going to, to uh, show up. Or they'll call themselves Christians and show up under the 63% of the faith. So that number, or they'll call themselves Christians. It's on. And, sh and be identified that way, even though they are not to that way. They're not really Christian, yeah. And I, I think, you know, let's show them the great alternative Lehigh Valley humanists have, continue to build our programming and attendance and membership and give them our alternative. Examples that I, I wasn't too familiar with, I haven't studied intensively, but Seattle Atheists is a very dynamic group. Denver Secular Hub is very dynamic. Houston Atheists, LA-based Atheists United, and many other major cities have big uh, free-thinking movements. And I want to cite one in particular. It's called the Central Florida Free Thought Community in Greater Orlando. Again, it's an area much larger than Lehigh Valley. Um, uh, but they are really, really busy. And they're interested in helping us grow our movement, actually. I, at the uh, um, Freedom From Religion Foundation um, convention I went to last year, one of the guys named David Williamson showed up. And he says, call me. I think on my notes at home I have his number. They have a website. You can sign up for their emails and see what they're doing. And they have all kinds of infrastructure to, t to tackle issues that we might want to get involved in. Um, we're going to take a we'll look at their CFFC, Central Free to Free Thought Committee news uh, email that comes out every month, I think it is. And in April, I, I wrote this in April. In April 2022, they had 19 events um, in, in, uh, in, their, in their region. This is a picture of, of the Central Florida Free Thought community. And they funded a billboard that I think was designed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation. They do a lot of this. And the billboard shows a church with traditional columns and a school building, an old-fashioned school building. And the caption is, let's practice social distancing between church and state, Central Florida Free Thought Community. And then it the shows their website. And uh, again, uh, that, that would have been probably designed by the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and we'll talk more about in a minute, uh, and paid for by those people probably. Um, let's see, I have some other things. This is the kinds of stuff they do. Uh, back in April, I think I grabbed this. Every week they have a free thought, one or more free thought cafe events. You can go on their website and find out more what they do, but it's discussions, maybe like the book group that we have. Every two weeks, they, the women of this community have their own subgroup. The women of the Central Florida free thought community meet twice a month. 
Monthly, they do an educational event and two volunteer cleanups annually. They're in the Pride Parade in Orlando and the Veterans Day Parade. And they're, they're big on this secular invocations. They're trying to make sure that government entities in their region are seeing secular people doing some of the invocations for their meetings. And they do a lot of work in that area. They uh, cable annually at Orlando's Earth Day and the Central Florida Veg Fest. And then they have solstice parties and other social events, too. You can see in their website they have a lot of interesting stuff. And as I say, if you ever wanted to talk to one of them, I think, I, I think his name is David Williamson. I could get you his number. I have it in my, in my stuff. But they have a lot of good ideas. Um, and, and I'm on their email list, so I get there what they're, some of the things they're working on. Um, let's see what I'm doing here. Now, I'm going to give a, three quotations that I think are interesting. The first is by a podcaster named Seth Andrews, and the podcast is the Thinking Atheist Podcast. I don't listen, I've listened to it a little bit. I don't care for Seth Andrews that much. But he comes out of Christian broadcasting. He's a, he's a Christian right-wing broadcaster who changed to an atheist. And in March, uh, February this year, he wrote this quotation. He says, I was once a victim of bad ideas. I was a Fox News watching, Christian nationalist, anti-LGBTQ, anti-abortion, scientifically illiterate bigot. But I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't evil. I didn't need to be destroyed. I needed to be rescued. And it was imperfect yet important work of atheist activists that caught my ear and fueled my journey. Um, I can't relate to I don't need to be destroyed. I mean, this is like right wing you know, self-flagellation, I think. I don't know what the hell he's talking about there. But I think what actually happened is he did a lot of speaking events, and he'd meet with the atheists beforehand and organize how they're going to do the event and talk to them about stuff and began to realize the atheists really had the right idea and his idea was wrong, and he flipped completely and now has a prominent uh, podcast. And I think there's a lot of people out there, and you can't argue with them, but if you meet with them and stuff, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that what, what it is is there's always a, tra this individual that made that statement traps themselves. Then that's what I think happens is they put themselves in a box and, you know, they're, they're basically anti-thought, you know, and you see a lot of that in, in the far right community. Yeah. Um, you know, and you're, it's not even traditional conservatism of, of, of the Buckley type. It's uh, uh, almost a self-prison for themselves mentally. And that's why our, I mean, we're talking about uh, tabling for pride and tabling events. That's a great time just to show we're here and we're reasonable people. We have good literature. We've got good ideas. And all of a sudden people say, oh, maybe I missed something here. I know I've been getting the indoctrination so long I've never heard from the other side. Maybe I have something to learn. Um, I have another quote from him also I wanted to put up here. In the same, same guy writing a little later in the, in the year. Atheist activism is vibrant, diverse, and very much alive. And now more than ever, its existence is critical. Fundamentalist religions are cunning and growing more desperately dangerous. Superstition will not go quietly. And in all of their forms, our tools for education and advocacy are a crucial corrective against religious indoctrination, exploitation, and oppression. And this guy, his career, he, he was a very successful Christian radio broadcast, uh, podcast, uh, broadcaster who walked away from that business. And that's what he says. This is what he came from. So I think that is, uh, you say, I don't recommend the guy. I don't care for his style too much. But uh, if you want to hear something, you could look at that if you like, listen to podcasts. And I have one other quote I thought I'd tell you. How many of you know who Heather Cox Richardson is? I really, if you want to be involved in political issues at all, she runs a free daily newsletter. It comes out every day by email. Uh, and you can pay money to get an advanced version, but the, the version that I get is just excellent. And she analyzes what's going on from a progressive perspective. She's doing a joint po a podcast with a professor at Yale. And you'll see him po she'll pop up at conventions. And she's, quite a, she's a professor from Boston University or somewhere up in Massachusetts, I think. Um, and her podcast is called Letters from an American, and she takes history and explains what's going on as it relates to history. Quite informative. I do highly recommend it. She says, every day people write to me and say they feel helpless to change the direction of our future. And I always answer that. We change the future by changing the way people think. And we change the way people think by changing the way we talk about things. And to that end, I have encouraged people to speak up about what they think is important, to take up the oxygen that otherwise feeds hatred and division. 
that have had far too much influence in our country of late. And I don't have, I mean, I think that's a great vision, but how do you do that? Well, you pride talking to your friends, inviting people to our events, having more events that attract a variety of people. I mean, these are all uh, a part of our future. There's no silver bullet in this game. And, and I, my, my friend that called himself an agnostic was really frustrated how terrible things are going even six months ago. I said, the problem isn't things are going bad. The problem is we don't have 250 year lives to see how it plays out. <laughs> you know, these are not, you know, we inherited this great constitution, 1781, where heck it was, 1789, whenever it was written, and we've evolved it, and it's gotten better. I mean, we don't have slaves in the fields anymore. And, and uh, people, our ancestors have invested in this society, and our job is to invest in the society to move it forward. And gee, we're in a great position with our humanist movement uh, to, to fall back on. There's great ideas for people to live. So I say, let's continue to work to build Lehigh Valley humanists. I mean, people want to be part of a movement. And what better movement now, now is there than humanist movement right now? And, and I encourage humanists to, you know, the board leads the way and has got a lot of things going on. But don't expect the board to do everything. If you've got an idea you want to run with, bring it to the board. And let's, let's, uh, let's move forward and expand humanism uh, in, the, in our region and do our share to give people an alternative uh, to church. So how am I doing? I'm doing good on time, I think. So now I'm going to go slip into the third thing. This is like the kitchen sink of stuff. I thought I'd give you a, a humanist national update, a survey, survey of free thinking landscape in the United States. And before I get to the first slide, I, I think I have a, a front end. You know, the Catholic Church has the Pope, and everything comes out of the Vatican. It's really, everyone knows who the boss is. In our movement, that doesn't really exist. There's no central point. It's a movement that's diversified, a lot of scholars, a lot of researchers, a lot of nonprofits. And I'm going to go through some of the nonprofits, or all the major nonprofits that, that run our movement to make sure you're up to speed on, on them. Um, the first one I want to talk about is the Freedom From Religion Foundation. They're often called FFRF, and their website is FFRF.org. I have them ranked in revenue rank, uh, sequence. But the revenues jump around. I mean, if you get a million dollar gift, all of a sudden one year the rank changes back and forth. But these are probably the biggest people. I think the revenue the previous, this is 2021, the previous revenue was nine million. But anyway, that's roughly uh, uh, revenue re level uh, in sequence, in descending revenue level. Um, their charity navigator, rating is four, rate, charity navigator rating is four star, which is absolutely excellent. Three is a worthwhile rating, but four is an excellent rating. It's run by a lady named Annie Laurie Gaylor and her husband, Dan Barker. They're co-presidents. It was formed by Annie Laurie and her mother. It's an anti-abortion, I mean, a pro-abortion uh, nonprofit that evolved into Freedom From Religion Foundation. Um, and Dan Barker is an ex-evangelical preacher. So if you want to talk Bible, he can go you to go your Bible uh, like the best of them. Uh, they publish a newspaper, Free Thought Today. If you're interested in seeing a copy, here are some copies. Uh, take them with you. It's about 26 pages. And they publish it, I think, 11 times a year. Um, and I went to their convention. And I didn't know them very well, but I went to their convention last November. Um, they're headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin. And they have a very Midwestern feel. I'm a Chicagoan by birth and raised in Indiana to some extent. So I really am sensitive to that. It is a national organization, and, and they're doing a lot of good work. Uh, their convention, three-day convention, there's no end of things they're working on and accomplishing uh, in the free thought uh, space, including like that billboard we saw for the Central Florida uh, free thought community. Uh, I think they don't want to use, a staff does not use the word humanism. They avoid the word humanism. I don't know why that is, but it's sort of, sort of strange. They prefer the term uh, free thinker. Um, and their, their membership is very, uh, very uh, diverse uh, in free thinkers, atheists, agnostics, and whatever. And they put out a sticker that I'm going to give anybody that wants one for their car, for their notebook, or whatever. It's called, Sec I'm Secular and I Vote. FFRF.org. I'll leave these out here too for you. If you'd like to have one to promote uh, secular uh, voting and secular uh, movement in America. Um, yeah, so that would be that would be a, the, probably the largest uh, nonprofit in the movement. 
The second one I want to talk about is American United for Separation of Church and State, often called AU, and their website's au.org. About 6.6 .6 million, but it jumps around. Uh, they get a Charity Navigator rating of three star, very supportive, very positive rating. Uh, they don't have the infrastructure to get the four star, apparently. Their president's a Jewish lady named Rachel Lasser, president and CEO. Their senior advisor's Rob Boston, and some of the magazines I have here, if you read them, you'll see Rob Boston does a lot of writing. They recently hired Andrew Seidel, a director of strategic response, and I'll tell you more about what he does, but he came from Freedom From Religion Foundation just two, three months ago. Uh, he was the director of strategic response there, and I'll tell you more about him in a minute. They put out a magazine called um, Church and State. Again, I have some copies here. I don't want these back necessarily, but I've read them, and they're the last three months. Um, it comes out 11 times a year. Um, one niche here, this is not a free-thinking organization. This is a mixture of religious and non-religious people working together to fight, um, uh, to support church and state separation. They, they uh, you know, are very quite successful. They're headquartered down in Washington, D.C., so they're really tied into the, the federal and the political stuff more than Freedom From Religion Foundation. Um, I, I don't think they uh, are a bad organization to support, but you're going to see religious people and non-religious people working together there pretty much. And they're starting a legal, they've been dabbling in legal, they're really starting a legal initiative to do things like ACLU does. They're in court a lot lately, and they're going to beef up their legal uh, battles. They've had some wins. You can find about those in their magazines. Um, so that's Americans United. The next one is Center for Inquiry around the same size as Americans United. Charity Navigator, three-star, good rating, but not the top rating. They put out a magazine called Free Inquiry. I don't have any copies, but Butch has a few of them from years ago on the table. I don't know much about this organization. I just don't know, and if you want to look into it, that'd be great. Under them is the Secular Council for Secular Humanism, and they have a separate website. Um, I think this comes from Richard Dawkins. I think this, I think this uh, is related to Richard Dawkins' work. Uh, years ago, but again, I, I don't rec I don't recommend. I don't. You, don't. Are, are, I think the ones about, you know, I don't even know that. I, I don't even know that. Oh, is that? Oh yeah. Okay, they're in Buffalo then. All right, good. The next is our, you know, our, our parent organization. That's the American Humanist Association. AmericanHumanist.org website, revenue $2.4 million. And by the way, these are all pretty small organizations. I mean, $12 million to run a national program ain't great. I mean, they do a lot at Freedom from Religion Foundation, but $2.4 million is a pretty small charity as, as charities go. The American Humanist does get a four-star uh, Gator, Gator rating, which is an excellent result. Nadia Duchin is the new executive director. Uh, the previous di executive director is Roy Speckhart. And he spoke here. He was here four or five, three, four years ago. Intelligent person, a lot of books, well known in the humanist community. And after, I think he served his 15 years as executive director, I think. At least he was with the American Humanist 15 years. He stepped down saying this movement needs people of color running it. And Nadia Duchin is a person of color that the board decided to uh, adopt her. I don't have any copies. I only have one copy of their quarterly magazine. It's sort of like the American Atheist, well, like the Church and State from American Uni uh, Americans United. Um, but it, it, you can find versions of it on the web, too, on their website. I have a few of them in the back. Oh, do you? Good, OK. Just so you get a feel for them. I mean, this is the organization that aren't, we're a part of. Uh, we're a chapter of the American Humanist Association. They have several uh, subsidiaries. Um, the first is Center for Free Thought Equality, and this is a political arm, and it's run by a guy named Moran Millar, who I've seen a few times and talked to on voicemail uh, conference calls a few times. They're the ones, it's Ron Millar and Roy Speckhart, I think, are the ones that put together the Free Thought Caucus in Congress. They, they're, uh, Ron Millar at the Center for Free Thought Equality is a political action committee raising money for progressive candidates, free thinkers, atheists, agnostic candidates all over the nation and the federal and state elections. And they went to Jared Huffman, Representative, California Representative Jared Huffman, said, how about if we set up a free thought caucus? And somehow Jamie Raskin got involved as a co-chair, and it now includes 17 members. And I'm proud to say 
Susan Wilde is a member of the Free Thought Caucus. The only person in the caucus that's a free thinker out of the closet is Jared Huffman, the congressman that runs it. Um, but many of them are probably free thinkers and just don't want to deal with the, the, you know, the negative parts of that. Um, the other organization, in, they have many subsidiaries, but another one is the Apignani Humanist Legal Center. And Apignani is just a wealthy guy that funded this. And they've got several lawyers that are, that are uh, prosecuting legal cases in our movement. And they're led by a Monica Miller, who is, I think she's certified to testify before the Supreme Court. She's a very high-end uh, young person, but a very well-qualified lawyer that leads that effort. And they have um, a Black Humanist Alliance, a Feminist Humanist Alliance, the LGBT Humanist Alliance, and a disaster recovery program they do with another nonprofit. They have about 18 staffers in 2022. Uh, and you can read the Humanist magazine on the, on, on, uh, um, on the web. So if you, you don't have to see it in paper if you want to see what they write about. I do have an announcement about this. I nominated myself to be on their board of directors, and I'll be in the election in September. So if you're a member of the American Humanist Association, you can't get by with a digital membership. You've got to pay the $20, $30, $40 a year. In September, a battle will come out, and I'm, there's three slots, slots open, I think. Uh, that part I'm not too clear about. And there's eight nominees, three are incumbents, and five are not incumbents. So I've got a resume. I don't, I'm not a writer in non you know humanism and that kind of stuff, but I do have a good resume with a lot of other things that got me a nomination there. Um, you have to be a member, a full member of the AHA to vote. I think it's 30 or $40 a year or something like that. So that's our subsidiary. And if, 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 you, if I'd encourage you to join at least one of these organizations and maybe look at the magazine, look at the web and see what you'd like to do. American Humanists would be a good one to join, but American Atheists and some others, I'll be getting American Atheists in a minute. Some of the others are also good to join. Um, I think you ought to be to support at least one of them so you're up to, more up to speed on what's going on in our na national effort. The next group is American Atheists. Probably Atheist. the one that we can vote for you then. Well, American, you know, for my own interest, join, join American Humorist and click Palmquist when the election comes up. Anyway, so American Atheists, pretty famous. This is the one that came out of that woman. Remember the old uh, Irish lady? Madeline Murray O'Hare. Madeline Murray She was the only atheist in the nation. And she got tired and feathered no end. But this is her organization, American Atheists, atheist.org, revenue 1.6 million. They're not rated in Charity Navigator, but that's not a negative. They're just a small organization. Not everyone's been rated. That's not a punitive position. Their, their magazine is the American Atheist, and I have a few copies of that here if you want to take a look at it. These, you know, magazines today are all quite slick. Uh, there's a couple of copies, of, recent copies of it here. Um, so it's run by Nick Fish. He was here three or four years ago, very intelligent, does a lot of writing, public speaking, I know, really a sharp guy. And he's got a vice president of legal and policy, Allison Gill, who's brilliant. She's a lawyer, and she's uh, one of the top legal brains in our movement, and a really good person to follow and keep track of, because she has a lot of good ideas and, and good information. And she's been around for a while. The, the, uh, just real quickly. There, but, uh, you know, the, the Foundation Beyond Belief actually is the Dawkins one, I think. I'm not sure of that. Anyway, there was an organization called Foundation Beyond Belief. I don't know anything about them. They just changed their name to Go Humanity. They're a $400,000 a year charity, which is miniature. And, and the Charity Navigator uh, has not rated them, but they are suspicious that they're not. They don't have good processes for fundraising. doesn't mean they're wasting people's money but they don't have the infrastructure to get a good rating, and they got a negative rating, and I don't think about them, uh, uh, per se, for what it's worth. And then the Secular Coalition for America is on this list. I have them down as a $210,000 organization. Um, they're not been rated by Charity Navigator, and their website is secular.org. But this is, an, a, this is a misplaced list here. Everyone else is an organization leading in the free thinking and the um, church separation movement. This is a service organization that services most of the rest. This is a consortium of 19 free-thinking nonprofits that joined together to lobby Congress. And everybody on the list, I told you, are contributors to this organization. And they've got uh, everyone except Americans United is not a part of this uh, because Americans United has religious people in it. And these people would be secular completely. Uh, the, the executive director resigned recently to take another position in our movement. And Scott McConomy was here last month. He's from this organization. 
and he's the lobbyist, director of policy and government affairs, and he spoke last month at our, at our group. But I, I think it's an important move, uh, organization to hear about. This organization might collapse because uh, you know, several of the organizations I mentioned have their own lobbying arms, and they're beefing up their own lobbying, and it might be, I mean, American Humanists is in Washington, D.C., and they're connected lobbying through Ron Millar very well and, and through Monica Miller, so they don't really need another group in Washington to support. But we'll see what happens when they replace, replace her. And this is a small organization. I think they have like a fundraiser, a lobbyist, and executive director that runs it. And, and they don't do all the work. They coordinate other nonprofits, lawyer, legal people, do research to help them uh, promote their own cases. And um, other organizations, there's a military association of atheists and free thinkers. There's the clergy project. And this is a group that takes pastors that, are, that want to give up, that want to leave religion. They're in churches, typically, but they realize religion is pointless. And this group helps them find new career paths and supports them confidentially, very confidential operation. Black nonbelievers, led by a pretty well-known lady, Mandisa Thomas. There's ex-Muslims of North America you hear about once in a while. And there's an organization called Recovering, Recovering from Religion. Uh, that I don't know much about, but they're out there also. Um, and again, we're, of course, we're affiliated with the American Humanist Association. And, you know, I, I think I'd recommend them over anybody, but if you saw something else that interested you, that'd be all right, too. So um, is anybody a member of any of these organizations? What, what, are, you, what are you in? Uh, the uh, Freedom from Religion of a uh, member. And so is uh, oh. Okay. Paul, are you a member of one of them? Yeah, or two, as whatever. you were going through the list. Okay, you hear about them all so much, it's hard to keep track of it. All right. Anybody else? Amer American Humanists. American Humanists. Okay. All right. The other thing I'd wrap up here, since I think my time is getting short, we're just about at the end of our time here. I thought I'd just give you a couple of minutes on the freedom from religions Na annual National Convention, November 19th to 21 in Boston. Pete Hans was going to go with me, and he had a family emergency that came up that he just couldn't go, so he abandoned his uh, ticket there. But I did go up there to Boston. I, I go, I, I'm not going to travel to San Diego for a convention, probably. But if it's in driving distance and it's an organization I want to know more about, uh, I think it's worth doing. Um, about 600 people attended. Uh, meeting halls were packed. Uh, speakers are mostly very good. They included Gloria Steinem spoke by Zoom. She had an injury and couldn't travel, but she spoke, did very well on Zoom. Steven Pinker from Harvard, some of you have read his books, one of the most brilliant minds in the nation, or the world. Margaret Atwood, the writer of Handmaid's Tale, was there. Anne Druyan, who's the wife of Carl Sagan, spoke, and their daughter, I forgot her name, Sasha, I think it is. And then a lot of people inside the movement. Catherine Stewart's a well-known writer in free thinking and had a lot of good ideas. Phil Zuckerman is the professor at Pitzer College in Claremont, California, that I think has the first PhD in free thinking or in secular studies or something. Very interesting guy. Written widely, speaks a lot. Very interesting guy. Sikabu Hutchins is a person of color who's very aggressive in calling uh, the majority out to uh, uh, changing their discrimination ways. This Andrew Seidel, I'll speak more about him in a minute, but he spoke. He was part of Freedom from Religion Foundation at that point, and, and most of the other staff uh, spoke. Um, lots of reporting on the work they've done in the past year, and, and uh, they have 20, 25 uh, staff members, but they, I would say they do a lot of work. Um, highlights of the convention, their top lawyer is a more, less dynamic lady, though very, quite intelligent, Rebecca Markert, and she runs their, their uh, lawsuits and that kind of stuff. And she says that almost every issue faced in Congress today has a church and state conflict under it. That it's, it's pervasive in our in the, the society. Andrew Seidel, who just left Freedom of Religion Foundation a couple months ago to Americans United, uh, has a strategic response team. And what they did last year is 60 issues came up, and they've got the resources and the, squad, the group within a day, they come up with a response to it. Most things, and before he got involved in it, things would go on for you know, something would come out and two weeks later, the, the nonprofits would make a statement on it, and he flipped that around to make it work. And he was so good at it that American United hired him in Washington, so he moved to Washington, D.C. And he's written a lot of books on our movement, too. He's an expert on the, the uh, 
Christian nationalist, written books on that subject, speaks on that subject. Um, uh, Professor Jay Wexler of Boston University uh, suggested activists, act, actions that we could use here at Lehigh Valley Humanists. Set up secular displays. We could uh, give secular invocations at public meetings and support secular student alliances. Uh, you know, a very well-informed guy. Jim, what did they think about billboards? They're, they're promoting billboards. Uh, Freedom from Religion Foundation does it. And you know, I don't know if you were here when I showed the uh, billboard that the uh, Central Florida Free Thought community put up at Freedom for Religion. Of course, there's a lot of billboards, particularly Freedom for Religion Foundation does a lot of that. Uh, it's, it depends on what we want to get involved in. I really do like um, Steven Pinker. Um, and what he said, one of the things he said, among other things, is why rational, rationality matters in life, why we need to live rational lives, is we get better outcomes in life, and it drives material progress by being rational. I think that's, you know, I mean, that's a pretty powerful statement compared to people that are, are all hung up on theology and what the God says and what the prayer says and what I feel like the God's telling me and all that stuff. Um, Andrew Seidel spoke on Christian nationalism, which is his, his forte. Um, this David Williamson is a guy from the Central Free, Florida Free Thought community. He was there and spoke about uh, what they're doing, and he really wants to help other organizations uh, do the things that, that uh, they're doing. Um, Phil, this Phil Zuckerman from Pitzer College, who again has a first PhD program in secular studies or whatever, he says that secular morality is going to save the world, that we're going to teach people how to live a secular life and it's going to save the world. And many other speakers and ideas, many of the staff people uh, spoke. Uh, the convention, I've forgotten the cost, but it might have been 200 bucks or something really reasonable. Um, hotel room, we were in a high end. Boston Hotel, and they were outrageously expensive. Lunch bag, box lunches were like $60, outrageously expensive. But you didn't have to buy them. You could go out and you know, go to a local diner or deli or you know, uh, in the building or even short. You know. But this is where they make their revenue to pay for all the benefits to make it, you know, to, to, uh, make it affordable for people. The crowd was quite diverse in terms of age and cultural background. A lot of the crowd looked like he could have been wearing MAGA hats. You know, I mean, really, I mean, this is a organization that's out of Madison, Wisconsin, so it has a Midwestern feel to it, though it's got people in every state. And again, they're doing good work. I didn't see too many people of color. I didn't see, it's hard to know who Latinos are, but I didn't see, uh, you know, it's a Midwestern white-based organization, it seems to me. And I'm sure they want to do better. And several of the speakers were black and, and people of color, certainly. Uh, I was going to go to this, but uh, something came up. I don't know what yeah. it was, but I, I noticed that they had a, uh, an opportunity to meet with uh, uh, the Handmaid's Tale lady. Yeah, she spoke extensively. And uh, it was uh, $500 to meet with her and get a signed book, as well as the other one. Yeah, Gloria Steinem. They had, they had separate receptions. To raise yeah. money, really. I didn't, then, I didn't participate in that. I mean, yet. I was actually going to give the money to them if I went, but uh, it just didn't work out. The, uh, the hotel is not the greatest hotel in Boston. Yeah. You could stay somewhere else there. So. Yeah, you could. Uh, what are, I wanted to mention about the uh, FFR Club. Uh, they have a uh, Facebook uh, page oh. you can visit. And uh, one of my favorite things on the Facebook page is crank mail. It's also in their magazine. So yeah. What they do is they, they state the letters they get from people who don't necessarily agree with them. And you can find them in, the, uh, in that magazine. Yeah. There. You want to see, it's really quite interesting. And they, they don't uh, edit the responses at all. Sometimes they're quite hilarious. Here, here's a crank mail example. This crank mail, this quarter page. Idiot. Go F yourself, you brainless piece of S morons and stay out of our lives, George R. Dunlap. <laughs> so that every, every month you'll see the crank mail they get, uh, you know, uh, you know they, they have a good time and they, uh, I think they're doing the right thing. Let's, let's get these people out in front. So, so take some magazines if you'd like to read about these organizations. I don't need them back. Um, get a secular, uh, I'm, a, I'm secular and I vote sticker. And by the way, do vote. We are, I think. In 2017, we did a get-out-to-vote effort, and the lady that uh, was mentioned earlier, I forgot her name, but her husband died recently. She said almost everyone's registered here and everyone's voting. 
that you really do need to vote. Uh, that was Martha, I guess. Martha, yeah. We, are, we aren't going to tell you how to vote. But um, and that wraps up what I had to say today, and we're about an hour. So that's good. Thank you. Any questions or comments? or? Jim, are, are you familiar at all, and do you, do you know anything about the um, PA, free, or PA non-believers? No. Because oh. we've, we, we have gone to those conventions in the past, and they haven't had them. I don't know if it was pandemic related or what, yeah. but they haven't had them in a while, but they would always alternate from Western PA, Central PA, Eastern PA with their convention. So yeah. a lot of them were pretty accessible for us, but I don't, I haven't heard a thing about them yeah, in, I don't in maybe them. five years. I don't know them. I, I know the guy with the Freedom From Religion Foundation who's got the point, he's the Pennsylvania League guy, and he's out in Lancaster, I forgot his name, but he said, hey, come out and see me. We have lunch every other month at a diner and but they're not really running any kind of program. They're not doing anything other than having lunches, I think. Uh, so they really could stand a bigger effort here. Some states are really actively led by Freedom From Legit Foundations, local volunteers, but other states are just floundering, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a good idea to keep a relationship with a lot of these groups, and yeah. we can't expect you to do all of it. If anybody wants to take point on one of these, one of these groups and report back to us on them from time to time, that would be phenomenal. Are there any other comments or questions? And oh, we'll yeah, Paul's in here. Yeah, I have one or two or three. Uh, Good. You had covered in the beginning a lot of the terms that are applied to groups, and some of these terms have a lot packed behind them, mm -hmm. and they're almost like trigger words. Yeah. And uh, it it depends how you identify yourself. Even if you say I could fit into three different groups how you respond to someone when they ask a question. For instance, yeah. if I say I'm an atheist, that automatically blocks you out from anything that they want to do. They, they categorize you as useless. But if you say I'm a non-believer, that gives them a thought that says, I can start working on this person. I can proselytize yeah. to them and try to get them out of that non-concept. Whereas if you said atheist, that's probably not, what's, not what is going to happen. The, the other thing is uh, the term humanist. I, I like the term because it kind of hides the fact that you're atheist, yeah. but it also implies something positive. And uh, at the last Adopt a Highway, I was accosted by two, I'm pretty sure they were ministers, and they said, what, are, what is a humanist? And I said, it's a, it's a uh, politically correct term for an atheist. And right away, the red flags went up, yeah. and there was all sorts of, uh, of eye rolling and whatever. And I always say the opposite. You say what? You say atheists? You say there are people who care about other humans. Yeah. And forget, forget about whether you go to a church or don't go to a church or believe that the magic guy flies from the sky or whether we're all doing it here as human beings with you know, hands and feet on our bodies. <laughs> Humanists are people who care about other humans. That works for me. There was a definition way back eight or ten years ago in this organization, and I printed it out on cards and laminated it and carried it with me. Unfortunately, I didn't have it with me that day, so it didn't help. But it does give a nice definition of what is a humanist, much like you said. There, and in my connection uh, links there, the, the American Humanist website's got great stuff. And if you haven't read the Ten Commitments of Humanism, I'd read that because they're really, uh, they're really powerful statements of what we should be doing to have a better society, a lot better than, than uh, you know, like the Ten Commandments. The other thing you said twice was religion is pointless. It was probably a side comment. Religion is not pointless. Religion's objective is to grow their membership because to them, numbers count. And I don't know how many of the numbers believe in their program or their real beliefs, but if you say I'm a XYZist, that builds their reputation or, or power to move legislation. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, and I, and I think it, uh, it's their social lives. A lot of people are in church for their social lives. Now, I. Um, had an opportunity to hear Bishop Spong of the Episcopal Church speak years ago now. I followed him for a while, and I actually had a joint venture with him. It didn't work out, but we had a little business we tried to run. 
And he got up one day at a meeting in, his, in North Jersey where he was the bishop and he had 150 people in the audience, all his, his priests and his uh, uh, congregants in his various churches. And he got up and said, um, we're, we're not, we don't believe in the Apostles' Creed. And one of the priests got up and said, wait, Bishop, you were at my church last week. You said the Apostles' Creed. He said, oh, we're going to be saying the Apostles' Creed for decades beyond when we believe it. That just so... Spong, yeah, yeah. You know, he was quite a quite a free thinker in, in many respects. He didn't believe God was up. He believed God was in your heart, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so um, religion is going to flounder around for generations more, probably. And we're not going to end religion, but we. I think we should develop this ten commitments and this idea of humanism and promote it and build our community. Yeah, I'm a, a member of the Unitarian Church, and. Uh, when I first joined in 2013, I stood up before them. I said, well, I am an atheist. And I didn't candy coat it at all. I said, so I don't believe in God. I never yeah. did, and I never will. But the church itself is made up of a, a collection of people, some who are atheists, some who are uh, theists, and some who don't know where they are. So yes. uh, it turns out that. Uh, a number of the people who are on the humanist side of this group meet every Tuesday morning at the uh, oh. Wakeman's in Bethlehem outside to have coffee at 9.30. And of course, anybody's welcome there. And they talk about things that we are concerned about and things of the day. But I can't think of anybody in there that is a theist of that group of like 13, I think, that were last week. It's kind of hard to talk with 13 people. Though. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, so there is something going on, just not outside of it. All right. I think that wraps us up then, or? No, oh, yeah. we have another question. Here. I, as I described to this gentleman when I came in here, I guess you could call me bi-curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm a theist. Okay. And a Catholic, but I'm open to this thought. You know, and it's very enlightening. Um, as I said in an earlier comment, I feel like uh, when you think in terms of fundamentalist terms or far right terms, you imprison your, your own mind and self. And um, I also believe that, you know, the one thing that is, is in common is we're all seekers of truth. And that's the important thing, you know, is that we keep our minds open. So. And I will say our community is not aggressive. We're not going to churches and protesting and leafletting their cars about how terrible their God is. We're just not interested in that. We're, we think we have a better way to live. And we want to explore that and train and educate around that. I think that. back in the days of Madeline Murray O'Hare, she was yeah. not the best advocate. She was entertaining. Yeah. I think I remember her, she was on the Phil Donahue show or even Dinah Shore. I don't know if Dinah Shore had her on, but you know, a long yeah. time ago. You see this Nick Fish and Allison Gill, slick, slick people. They're not throwing torches and stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, I think you uh, referenced a study where they show non-affiliated as, you know, a large group. And I, I think, you know, that number um, is encouraging, but it's also, you know, I think if, when we read too much into it, right, non-affiliated doesn't mean humanist, doesn't mean yeah. atheist, right? It really just means people who don't, you know, in some ways, are just too lazy to get up and go to church on Sunday, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> very much. That's a majority of those 30%. I think the atheist number is 4%. You know, yeah. I think of the 30%, only 4% call themselves atheists or maybe less. So it's, we have a ways to go to really yeah, and spread for me, this movement. Like terminology-wise, you know, coming from being you know, Catholic and, and transitioning out of that, like agnostic was just it was a softer term, right? So... If I, if I thought of myself as agnostic or told people I was agnostic, it was, you know, oh, okay, you just don't know, right? It was, and then, you know, atheist is more, it's just a, they really, they're two separate things, right? Really, they come at the same, yeah. um, you know, same point, but just from two different angles. But it's just in our society, like atheist, you know, even for myself internally, it, I wasn't ready to call myself an atheist. Yeah. I had to call myself an agnostic first. I think Paul's point, too, is we want to I'd play down atheists because it just stops the conversation. The term atheist stops the conversation. And I'll tell you, right, right before the pandemic, we started getting heavily into tabling events. 
And I think, what was it? Was it the Coopersburg one, Bill? Bill and I were, <clears throat> about every other question for people that came by was, what the heck is an atheist, or what the heck is a humanist? And we were trying out different things. It was, it was kind of fun. We were experimenting around with different ways to answer. Yeah. And I fit, what did we settle on? We, we were telling them, we're a church group for people who aren't religious, is one of the <laughs> things. We do a lot of the same things that the church group does. We have get-togethers and, and charity. We do charity work and things like that. And then, you know, you can have a longer conversation with people and, and flesh out the bones a little bit. But I think that's, do you remember, Bill? Was that, that was kind of what we settled on. We were... We tried a whole bunch of different things because really we were answering the question every about 15, 20 seconds. So. Yeah, and that's so great having that humanist banner out there and having people we more by. I don't even talk to you. Say, oh, there's humanists there. What are we humanists? Th are? Those events were so fun, and it was it was a, a, a bad thing when the, a, a lot of the community events and things just went went cold after that because we were having so much fun. We'd be out there for hours talking to people. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm in favor of doing that again. I like to do tabling. Well, we're, we'll definitely be tabling at the Pride event in August, August 21st, so. I'll be running American Civil, Liberty, Civil Liberties Union Pride uh, tabling, actually, that day. We can multitask. Okay, yeah. I used to run AARP Pride and ACLU, and I'd have them together next to each other. <laughs> he'd help me, he'd be out there, help me set up and tear down, because you had your own. That works out pretty well. We might do want to do that again, tell the. Uh, you read, we've already registered ACLU. Tell them put it next to AC, uh, ACLU table and we'll share resources. Thanks for your attention. And I hope you enjoyed this and I appreciate the comments and everybody's got an idea to present here, not uh, just one speaker, so I think it's good. Thank you. Yeah, can we have a round of applause for Jim, please? <laughs> now, is